Hi everyone and welcome back to my shed. Uh, the other day I did a, a video on uh, making a cribbage board and I was asked how I managed to get a 1 8 inch drill into my router chuck. Well today I'm going to show the answer to that question and the trick is we're going to make an adapter for it and we're going to use this quarter inch bolt. Now that the bolt has been chucked up in the in the lathe here, I'm going to start by making the uh, bolt round. I, I I don't want those uh, the flats on the on the uh, bolt. So I'm just going to round off the edges here. We need to take a little bit more off. You can't see while it's spinning how much more needs to come off. So just a fraction more. As you can see there now, it's, it's nice and round. It's, uh, I'm just going to angle the cutter differently now. So I can use the tip here and just face off the surface there. Now what I'm also going to do is when I get to the centre I'm just going to make a small divot there with the cutter and that will be my starting point for my drill bit. I need to just put a bigger angle on there. Run out of travel on my on the lathe there. Right. Okay, now I've chucked up a, a centre piece, which I'm going to use to just drill, or just start my hole so that uh, my 1 8 drill can be run through. So, uh, centre pieces are very stiff drills with just a, a small um, drill bit on the very end of it. Now that's all I want to do in this case. I don't want to take it all the way through because uh, 
I just wanted to get a start for the hole. And now I'm just going to slowly wind my drill bit in. Now I've gone in here very, very deep. Um, I just want to make sure I'm definitely all the way through because once I've finished doing this, putting it back in the lathe will probably never line up quite the same again. So there we have our drill, our hole drilled through anyway. Okay, next job is to is to cut this off. I can either do that with a hacksaw or with a parting tool, whichever takes my fancy. Right, I'm now going to use a parting tool to uh, cut off my, my bolt here. And the first thing is I've changed the parting tool, is I want to make sure the parting tool is nice and square to my lathe chuck. Because if it isn't, it's not going to cut properly. So the easiest way of doing that is just to loosen the whole tool Push the parting tool blade against the face of the chuck there and just tighten tighten the chuck. Oops, it moved a little bit, so I'll just hold it square there and tighten. Okay. That will help us eliminate problems when we're cutting through. I brought my parting tool in close to the chuck. I put the lathe on the back gear running it nice and slowly and I'll be using uh, cutting fluid as well uh, as we go so let's see if we can't get this cut All right, here we are. The piece uh, came off, but it's left a bit of a burr on the back of it. It's now a bit too short for me to get into back into the lathe. I can't hold it this way because I've got a large piece there. It'll only wobble about in the lathe, and I don't need it to go back in the lathe anyway. All I want to do is remove this. I can remove it on a grinder, but I find uh, my sanding disc to be a much better tool for this sort of job. So. There we go, nicely finished there. Might just put a slightly beveled edge on the front there. And we'll call that done. Okay, well we've now got our two parts. So we've got our drill and our new collar. The drill's a nice fit in there because we use the same drill to drill the hole in our collar. So now we need to attach the drill to here. And the easiest way of doing that is to solder it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave about whatever length I want sticking out the from my collar. I'll leave about well, that much there. And you always grind it away. You can't add it back on. Just tighten it in here. Right, I'm now going to run around the drill bit with a file just to clean the metal on it. Just to, I'm also going to just put a drip of uh, this uh, tinning flux here on. 
the same stuff they use for uh, uh, on roofs and things when they're um, doing uh, uh, lead flashings onto onto roofs. Now I'm just going to use a, a small hobby soldering iron here. Well, this has actually got a um, gas torch on, and it's got the soldering iron attachment and all the rest of it. This one's meant to put about 1400 degrees out, so that should be more than enough for the job. There it goes. Oops, on that. There we go, it just flows flows around the metal like so nicely around the the drill bit. Just beware the fumes that come off the the soldering flux. This one's called um, zinc chloride. Uh, don't know if you can see it there. Like I said, it's usually used on, on roofs and things. Okay. I'll just use a pair of pliers to pick this up in the, in the meantime. So there we have our drill bit on there. Now we have to deal with the, the rear end of this. So we'll go back over to the lathe. The drill is back in the, in the lathe chuck. Again, I've put the lathe on the back gear so it's turning as slowly as it can. And I'm just going to part, use the parting tool to cut through the end of the drill here. Now while the drills themselves are hard, you usually find the rear of the drill, the shank, isn't actually hard. And there we go. I'll just use the grinder to get rid of this uh, little end piece here. Right now here's the finished drill ready to go into the chuck of our um, or into the collet of our router. However there's one little thing I like doing with these here and that is I like to resharpen them. I don't like the standard sharpening. This is a brand new drill bit it's properly sharpened, as you saw it cut through steel very nicely, but uh, I'm not going to be using it for cutting through steel. And I find that for small bits like this, I couldn't sharpen them to save my life. Although, having said that, small cutters, even some of the worst sharpening, will, uh, will still cut wood. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen it in such a way that it's easy to do, and... Um, it's just so easy to sharpen it every time you want to use it and uh, it will cut wood very nicely it won't cut steel uh, wouldn't even cut aluminium but it will cut wood nicely so what I'm going to do is on the grinder I'm going to grind it so that this point here sorry so that this point here slopes backwards so I'll see if I can show you on the grinder
Now I don't know how well you guys can see this, but if you're looking straight down on my drill bit here, you'll see it's virtually flat, but it's, it's not quite, it actually bevels. You can see there it uh, slopes up on an angle like that, and from here you can see it also slopes back that way there. That makes this point here the top point, and that's the bit that does all the cutting. This point and this edge here are your cutting edges. As it drills down, this bit and this edge cut your hole. When you go through your material, you're actually cutting the outside of the hole. On normal drill bit, you're cutting from the center, and when you if, you, if you want to drill your hole right through your material, the drill bit actually has to go past the material. You can see on this larger standard drill bit, if I want to go through my material and cut, I have to go that much further through, which is about uh, five, six millimeters through my material into my spoil board to make sure these cutting edges here actually cut the hole right through my material. By, by making this point here on the outside the longest point, I only need to go through until I'm just through the material, just skim the material, and the hole will fill out, by, will fall out. Uh, you'll be left with little um, tiny cone-shaped discs, the opposite of what you would have ended up with the other drill and they basically just fall out. So that's how I sharpen these drill bits. Um, and again, for two reasons. I sharpen them that way because they are very easy to sharpen like that, and the second is the way they cut. But unfortunately, they're only good for wood and um, other soft material. You cannot cut metals, you can't cut aluminiums or steel or anything like that. Um, Rightio, well I hope that's been useful to you. The only other thing I should mention is when you're drilling with a drill bit you need to drill, you need to have your router running nice and slowly. Uh, mine's running about 7000 RPM. Uh, it will slow down even more when it hits the material so 5 to 7000 RPM is probably about as fast as you would want to turn this bit while cutting through wood. Any, any faster than that material just gets clogged up in here, it doesn't clear uh, if there's resins in the timber, it'll just gum right up, uh, and then they just burn as well. They they're just no good. You, they, they may be high speed drills, but um, high speed when you're drilling doesn't mean 20,000 RPM. So yeah, just remember when you're drilling holes with these drills, drill slowly, and they'll drill very nicely for you. Okay. Well, I hope that's been useful to you. Cheers.